morning, everyone. It's great to be back. I wonder if we could uh, bring up the, uh, the slides. I want to again just acknowledge the traditional owners before we start, and uh, particularly to any Indigenous people here, can I particularly thank you. I mentioned last night, you go to Kakadu, the oldest known settlement site anywhere in the world, 71,000 years. Go into New South Wales, a place called Bawarana, the fish traps, you know what that is? This is the oldest known person-made structure in the world, 21,000 years ago. The pyramids were 10,000. We live in an amazing country and we have had Indigenous people have provided amazing stewardship of these lands for a long, long time. So it's always great to always start and acknowledge what we are really have been able to in inherit. I mentioned that I believe these events should be learning times. Now, how many people are into Winnie the Pooh? Do we have any civilised people amongst them? The fact that only six people have been amazing. I did also point out, I feel like I'm back in church, the front pews are empty, it's normal. I just do need to point out there were two free tickets to Paris and a few left over on uh, Olympic tickets on the front row here, but we'll use those a bit later. But I'm into Winnie the Pooh and I think there's a wealth of wisdom there and I love this one. Here is Edward Bear coming downstairs now, bump, bump on the back of his head behind Christopher Robin. It is, as far as he knows, the only way of coming down the stairs. But sometimes he feels there's another way. He can only stop bumping for a moment and think of it. And that's what I love about a weekend like this. We're on in bump, non-bumping time. We have an opportunity to engage in conversation with other people who care and discover what it is that we all care about and learn from each other and leapfrog on each other. So I hope today is going to be one of those days where we will really learn from each other. I, stood, I disturbed a number of you last night by claiming that we're not here just to help people. I know that's your logo, and I'm keen to give a few more grenades to our kind of like uh, hold in residence. To, but I need to point out, I learned this from my friend Susan. Susan suffers from more physical disabilities than any other person I know in the planet. She lives in Toronto. And I can remember sitting with her one day when she was just feeling that all people saw is she was an object to have things done to. And she turned to me and said that our purpose is not just to help people. Our purpose is to build a different kind of community for all of us. And I suppose that's at the heart of really what I want to kind of like share with you today in terms of where we're going. I pointed out, if I can very quickly, that I wanted to introduce to you very much that there are four ways that we can interact. And we can do things to people and we can do things for people. And that's become the traditional model. I'm not saying that they are not important. There are times when that direct intervention and that transaction needs to happen, particularly when we're working with the most marginal. There is a time for expertise, there's a time for professionalism. When I flew into Melbourne yesterday, I did not want all the other passengers on the plane to suddenly say, let's have an encounter group and, tell, and work out what we're gonna tell the pilot in terms of how to land the plane. <laughs> I trusted that he or she knew quite clearly and had that expertise. So there's a time when we do need kind of like that type of intervention. But if that's all we're doing, we're not building community. I'll say that quite obviously. What we need to do is learn that art of how we do things with people and how do we create that space of of and by the people. One of the people that's helped me understand that is my neighbour. His name is Ken White until recently the Minister for Indigenous Australians. And I remember at one of our street parties, Ken was saying to me these words, we've got to stop doing things to Indigenous Australians and instead of do with. Governments can facilitate, but let the energy response come from the community level. And I suppose that's what I'm on. I'm interested in how we build this sense of community where all, no exception, everyone, 
brings their gifts in terms of where we're actually going. How do we move both in our language and in our practice from seeing people as clients, recipients, consumers of what we are trying to deliver through to actually becoming co-designers, co-contributors, citizens in the world that we are trying to be. And it seems to me currently that <coughs> is a huge kind of like journey that we need to be on. And I do believe it's through the arts that we can see really a way to go forward, a way that embraces people. The interest in that and the creativity with it gives us a new way of kind of like embracing with people. And so last night I basically wanted to share some of the learnings I've learned on the journey of this over six, six decades. Start with what is strong, not what is wrong. Begin to see people as full, whole, created in God's image. Every one of them, no exception, with some exception again. Don't do anything for anyone that they can do for themselves. Basic principle in trying to build strong people, strong communities. Create a place for everyone's gifts. There should be no strangers. There should be no kind of like uh, exceptions to that rule. Everyone, no exception, brings something to the table. And finally, the most important question you can ask people is what do they care about? It might not be your agenda, but what is it they care about? And who else cares about that? And what is it together we may be able to do with it? To me, that's what it's fundamentally all about. So I've got three hours with you. Today I want to really get you into it right from the start, into practicing some of this. Second session, we'll get much more into some of the examples and how we might do it. And then the third one, how do we do it with others in terms of where we're at? But I do want to suggest a couple of uh, suggestions about how we make these three hours meaningful. Firstly, they are my do kind of like rules for this workshop. If you look at them, they all add up to one thing. This is not my workshop, it's our workshop. At any stage, please feel free to intervene. You want to question, you want to debate, you want to illustrate, you want to tell a story from your own experience, please feel free to it. I'm not one of those people who just leaves it to the end where we have a question time. At any stage, feel free to actually intervene. And in particular, the way that we learn is not through theory or facts or figures or statistics, we learn through stories. The world is not made up of atoms, it's made up of stories. I can tell you statistical stuff you may or may not remember. Tell someone a good story, they never forget. And so one of our key roles in community building, I believe, is to be a storyteller. And I love that one. Storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world. Every person here also in the course of a shower has thought of a good idea when it comes to building community, doing more, engaging people. And so this workshop is again an opportunity to bring some of those things out because it, you know what, it's ideas that drives us forward. And we do need again times like this where we share it. But I've got a favourite quote, it's this one. Whoever invented the first wheel was smart, whoever in invented the other three was the genius. <laughs> and so often in workshops like this people come up with Guess what I thought of? Guess what we're doing? And rarely do people ever replicate what someone else does. They leapfrog on it and take it in another direction or value add to it. And I really do hope that may be our experience today. And, and I love that cartoon. Tell him we haven't got any time for any of his bright ideas. We have a battle on our hands. <laughs> and the value of coming together over a weekend is that we can kind of like share the new creativity, the new approaches. Because as I pointed out, we ain't doing too well when it comes to issues like loneliness, depression, mental health. I find it staggering that the greatest kind of like cause of death now in this country for 15 to 48 year olds is suicide. But what's gone wrong? And at the heart of it is how do we rebuild people's connection with each other and with their God? And that's why we need to be creative about how we do it. And the final don't for this workshop, I wouldn't take a lot of notes. Um, if you want any of the slides, they'll all be made available um, to you. We also have some handouts and whatever. So don't feel that you need to be, those of you who are like me and love quotations, don't feel you need to be writing them down. You can actually have them all. 
I work for an organisation that operates on copy left, not copy right, which means that uh, you can rip off everything. Um, it's all there. That's our copy left policy up on our website. I need to say a few weeks ago, we actually used to have their parts maybe torn out, extracted, stolen, summarised. And the local cop shop rang and said, Peter, we've been checking your website. You're advocating stealing. Do you know that's against the law. I thought if the cop shop's looking at what we're doing, we should at least honour them and, and take out what we've stolen. But that's our policy. All the stuff's there. It'll all be provided um, <coughs> to Jason, and uh, it can all be downloaded if you want it. And use it, modify it, do what, what. With uh, one of those people, we've all been given by God information, and we need to be a messenger in how we share that with people. So um, they are the suggestions. They are what we are really interested in, in terms of kind of like moving forward, in terms of. It. Now, can we discover who's in the room? I want to call out categories of people. If it happens to be you, what I want you to do is to yell out, That's me! <laughs> you try that. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's already asleep. Hell of a, um, contemplating. Contemplating. So if I yell it out, I want you to say, That's me! And then everyone else goes, Welcome! <laughs> you just try the welcome bit. <laughs> Come on, expect better from Selvos. Welcome! Welcome! <laughs> Okay, all those people up to 20 in the room.
fun working with dying country towns. And I love this, I love rural humour. Good morning, I'm Alex Lowe. I'm the Seconda Special Projects Liaison Officer in the Regional Coordination Statistics Unit of the Rural Research Division of the Department of Agriculture. Yep, and I'm Bill. And I just love that, that rural cynicism and humour and whatever. To me, discovering each other, building friendships. You know what? Community building is all about relationship building. It's not about program delivery. It is all about building people's connection and relationships with each other. And particularly for us, it's about also building that connection to our God. And so relationship building is so important. And a lot of what we want to talk about today is how do we deepen kind of like that connecting, that relationship building. And so again, I want us to start with a good practical exercise for us to kind of like see how easy it is to discover each other and discover what we care about. And so again, what I'd like you to do is to stand. So I want to point out again for all of those non-believers in Winnie the Pooh and other other way, it's so much friendly we too. I want you now to peruse this amazing asset-rich room that we have. Have a look, turn around, identify, see the people here. This is an amazing asset-rich room. And as you cast your eyes around the room, I want those eyes to fall on the person that you least know. The person you least know, it certainly isn't the two you've already met, who do you least know? And now putting one foot in front of the other, I want you to move towards that person and start up a conversation. Move towards that person and start up a conversation. Spread yourselves out, we've got plenty of room. Doesn't need to be amongst the chairs, but push the chairs out of the way. Pair up with the person that you least know.
to this thing we call community. Community can be a community that's geographic. It can be a community of interest. It could be a faith community. It could be your choir. It is a community. I want you to choose the community that you love the most. It may be your neighbourhood community, it may be your faith community, it might be your choir community, it might be that online community of uh, dragons and dungeons that you're part of, whatever. These are all communities. And with that in mind, what I want you to share with your friend is what are the two things you love about being part of that community? whether it be geographic or a community of interest. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, in the past. No, it has to be today because of the next question. Um, you can't do much about the past. It's the future. Okay, so choose a community you are currently part of. And the question is, what are the two things you love about being part of that community?
Thank you. 
one final one-on-one -on -one conversation. And that is that every person in this room is asset rich, has a whole pile of assets that they bring to the multitude of communities that you're actually part of. And I love to talk about assets or gifts. I much prefer to talk about gifts, God-given gifts that we all have. There are four types of gifts that we have. We have gifts of the head. Every one of us knows something about something. We've all studied, we've got hobbies, we've toured, we read. You are passionate about a whole pile of head things. I'm passionate about Art Deco. I love Art Deco. I'm an Art Deco freak. I go to Art Deco World Congress and I photograph every Art Deco building. I've got every book on Art Deco. My community wanted to restore an Art Deco building. I'd be the first person they would always ask because that is something I know a lot about. And you might know a lot about a whole pile of subjects. Secondly, we, <coughs> we have gifts of the hands. There are people in this room who know how to bake a cake, play an instrument, organize a meeting, put a social media campaign together, coach a soccer team. They are what we call gifts of the hands. Gifts of the heart are the things that we care deeply about. I care deeply about indigenous issues. I care deeply about engagement of young people in community. I also care about the Docker Footy Club. I have things that move me at the heart. And if I was ever invited to be around any of that, I couldn't say no, no matter how busy I am. But I care about it and I would join in. And finally, we have gifts of the feet. These are connections that may be useful. Some of us are members of faith communities. We are often a member of a service club. We might have the mayor live next door to us. We might know the local member of parliament. I had kind of like Ken Wyatt lives next door. He's a friend, he's a neighbor. Pretty useful when he was in federal cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and so on. So we have gifts in the head, hands, heart and feet. If I said to you, what are the two most important gifts you bring to that group that you talked about? What two gifts would you choose? They can be either gifts from the head, gifts from the heart, gifts from the hands, or gifts from the feet. What are your two most important gifts you think you bring to your community group? We'll now start with the tall. <laughs>
don't link with two other pairs to create now a group of six. Can we now create a group of six? Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 
discover who is the old bugger in the group. Who is the oldest? Who is the oldest? It's pretty obvious in some groups, not necessarily in all. Okay. As, as your hair, as your hair starts to turn the colour of white or you start to lose it, very conscious of being an old bugger in, in society. I need to point out uh, two months ago I had to run a whole part of community workshops in a pile of Anglican nursing homes where they wanted to create a new sense of community. They wanted the residents to kind of begin to uh, become much more involved in what went on in that community. And one of them had a whole wing that had 60, 90 year olds in there. And I, I tell you, I have never enjoyed working with a group like them. I said to one of them, what's it like to be 90? And he said, well, when you consider the alternative, it ain't bad at all, actually. <laughs> and I said, at 90, what's your passions left? He said, I've only got two, model railways and women. And he said, at 90, I'm getting a little bit old for model railways. <laughs> So starting with the oldest, and can I say, you can pass on this one if you do not want to share. Never force people into sharing if they don't want. But what I want you to do is starting with the oldest member of the group and going clockwise this time, what I want you to do is to share something you're proud of that no one else in that group will know about you. Now, maybe something you've done in a previous life. You might have been victorious, under 14 archery champion, in 1917. That's something you've never forgotten, and nor should you. It may be a constant hobby. You may be a community developer by day, but what really turns you on is the kitchen, and you go home, and you're the greatest friendship the world has ever known. Or it may be what you aspire to do, that one day, by age 60, I want to walk the Kokoda Trail. Something you've done that you're proud of, something that might be a closet hobby, or something that you aspire to do. Now please don't say I'm proud of my grandchildren. If you're a grandparent, you are meant to be proud of your grandchildren. And let me tell you, you are not responsible for it anyway. That was the son or daughter. Um, I'm not interested in that. Something about you that no one else would know about you. So starting with that oldest person, and you've got uh, less than one minute. Is this worth You're not really here.
and all you hear as you go around the circle, I didn't know you'd done that. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that. Amazing. I was in one town, and we've got any peewees in the audience? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Will you admit there are peewees? Yeah. And so my grandma was from the central of Target, so it's okay. But I was working in a town called Winton, which happened to be the most conservative town on the face of the earth. They would all vote for Donald Trump if they could, if they lived in America. Oh, um, and uh, as we went around, we got to number seven. He was six foot eight sheep farmer. And he just looked at me and said, well, what the heck, I want to tell you, I love cross-dressing. Well, the roof rattled on the building. After that, people were dressing the most unbelievable things. And they have waited a lifetime to tell other people in the town. Any other comments about how people have treated their, how they value that or in the session? I'll actually have yep. like, the conversation started. Because I'm a terrible networker, but being told what to ask someone. Yep. So I like being prompted with how to have a conversation because I'm an awkward conversationalist at the best of times, so that gave me direction. Yeah. And I really yep. it. And the secret sort of make it short, sharp, and yeah. snappy, and whatever. But I was guided by the group. I kept. I didn't watch the time at all, actually. It was how people were going, mm -hmm. and the body language, the eye contact. And I tell you, in ninety, I reckon ninety-five percent of the groups, most people couldn't appreciate another five minutes per topic. They were really getting into it. But anyway, that's really opening up this whole thing about how do we create communities where everyone feels they belong, where they matter, and where they can contribute. And the starting point is to discover each other and discover the gifts that we all uniquely bring into that particular group. We'll talk more about how we do that in the next session uh, before lunch today.